Hello, I'm Jeremy Gervin. I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services, and I specialize in Microsoft workloads running on AWS. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to choose Active Directory solutions running on AWS. So what are your options to run Active Directory on AWS? The options to run Active Directory solutions on AWS include AWS Directory Service for Microsoft Active Directory, otherwise known as AWS Managed Microsoft AD, AWS Active Directory Connector, otherwise known as AD Connector, AWS Simple AD, Self-Managed AD running on Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, otherwise known as Amazon EC2. Let's first dive into the AWS Directory Service offerings. They include AWS Managed Microsoft AD. AWS Managed Microsoft AD is based on Windows Server 2019 and offers a full AD experience. It works with the existing Microsoft Management Consoles as well as the Active Directory PowerShell commandlets provided by Microsoft. Customers are given limited permissions over the directory. We provision an organizational unit, or OU, based on the name of the NetBIOS name of the domain, and customers are given full control over the objects within that OU. We also delegate a subset of permissions outside the OU, which can include DNS server management, group policy management, as well as deploying PKI. It comes in two editions, Enterprise and Standard. The biggest difference between those two editions is Enterprise supports up to 500,000 objects, as well as the ability to extend your existing Active Directory into multiple regions. Standard Edition supports up to 30,000 objects, but does not offer the ability to extend into multiple regions. The service itself is available in 31 regions today. That includes the two GovCloud regions. It offers broad AWS and third-party compatibility. Most third-party applications will work with the service as long as they don't require domain admin or enterprise admin. And it also offers a one-to-many domain relationships via trust. Next up, we have the AWS AD Connector. It is a non-caching authentication proxy for AWS applications. It comes in two editions, a small and a large. The editions are identical other than the compute behind them. I generally recommend to customers to start with a small edition, and if they need to upgrade to a large, they can open a support case requesting an upgrade. It is also available in 31 regions, and it's compatible with AWS applications so it does not work with third-party applications. And it offers only a one-to-one -one domain relationship. So if you have a complex on-premises Active Directory environment, you may have to have multiple AD connectors for each domain in your Active Directory environment. Next up, we have AWS Simple AD. It's a Linux Samba-based Active Directory solution. It offers a limited AD experience because the Active Directory PowerShell commandlets do not work with it. The Microsoft Active Directory Management Console does work with it, but it is limited in what it can and cannot do compared to the full Microsoft Active Directory. It comes available in two editions, a large and a small as well. It's only available in six regions with no plans to extend beyond those six regions. It has limited AWS and third-party compatibility since it is not a true Active Directory and not every application will work with it. Also, customers do not have the ability to connect it to other domains. It does not support trust. Finally, we have Active Directory on Amazon EC2. This offers a lot of flexibility because you get to choose the OS, you get the complete AD experience, as a result, you also have full permissions. You control everything. You can deploy anywhere you can deploy a server. So it's available in every AWS region as well as some additional options like Outpost or Snowballs. It has limited AWS application compatibility as not every application can natively integrate with Active Directory without the aid of an AD connector or AWS Managed Microsoft AD with a trust. But it does offer the broadest third-party compatibility as you have full permissions. If it's AD compatible, it will work with the service. It also offers a one-to-many domain relationship via trust, just like AWS Managed Microsoft AD. So how do you choose between these Active Directory solutions on AWS? Well, first up is AWS Managed Microsoft AD. These are the questions I ask customers when I talk to them. The very first one I ask is, do you need to use Amazon Relational Database Service, otherwise known as RDS, with Windows Authentication slash Kerberos Authentication? If the answer is yes, AWS Managed Microsoft AD is required. Now, you notice I have an asterisk next to that answer. The reason being is just recently we launched Amazon RDS for SQL Server support for self-managed AD. That is the only Amazon RDS type that currently supports self-managed AD. So the other RDS types still require AWS Managed Microsoft AD if you want to have Windows slash Kerberos authentication. Next up, do you want a managed Active Directory solution? If yes, AWS Managed Microsoft AD may be a fit are not having domain slash enterprise admin acceptable for you? If the answer is yes, AWS Managed Microsoft AD may be a fit. 
Are 500,000 or fewer objects in Active Directory acceptable? If yes, AWS Managed AD may be a fit. Finally, do you plan on migrating to AWS Managed AD? And also, can you accept that SID history is not available? Let me explain what SID history is real quick. SID history offers customers the ability to reuse their existing SIDs when they migrate from one domain to another. A SID is a unique identifier each Active Directory object has. It's unique to that object and cannot be reused anywhere else. SID history allows the reuse of existing SIDs. It is not enabled by default with AWS Managed AD. If the answer is yes to both those, AWS Managed AD may be a fit. You may notice all these answers say, may be a fit. There's a lot of nuance to selecting a directory services solution, and these are just general questions to point you in a direction. Further investigation is necessary to come to the final solution. Next up, we have AWS AD Connector, and let's see if that's a fit. Do you require applications supported by AD Connector? If yes, it may be a fit. Do you require identity solely stored in a single Active Directory? If yes, AD Connector may be a fit. Again, as stated previously, may be a fit. There's a lot of nuance to selecting a solution here. Next up, we have Active Directory on EC2, and let's see if that's a fit. Do you require access to enterprise or domain admin groups? If the answer is yes, continue using self-managed AD. Do you require direct access to domain controllers themselves? If yes, continue with self-managed AD. Do you require your directory to expand on-premises? That can include other cloud providers as well as data centers around the world and AWS. If the answer is yes to that, please continue to use self-managed AD. And do you require agents or software to be installed on the domain controllers themselves? Uh, these can include security software, uh, logging software, things like that. If the answer is yes, continue using self-managed AD. I wanna thank you for your time today to watch this video. Also in the description below this video, you'll see a variety of links that dive deeper in details on each of these subjects that we spoke about. Thank you.